Well, hello there, this is the Music Wizard here, also known as Cool Dude Clem, and today we're going to be taking a look at a free product that I have released, the ultimate Mod Plug Tracker Electric Guitar Sample Library. And you did hear me correctly, I said free. Now I don't know about you, but I'm someone who believes all downloads on the internet should be free. I mean, you go on the internet looking for some good sample packs, and the good ones out there, they're ridiculously overpriced. I mean, you could get a pretty decent real guitar for less than what these people charge. I mean, I can see paying 20 or maybe even 30 for software, but I'm not paying extortionate prices for software and samples and things like that. So, I'm releasing this sample pack for free. Just like things used to be, because things on the internet used to be free. It used to be download this and download that, but now it's buy this and buy that, so I'm bringing those old days back. And this is just a straightforward, free download. You don't have to download any sp in order to download it. You don't have to sign up for anything. There's no passwords, registration keys, bundleware, or any stupid crap like that. The only other thing you might need is 7-Zip if you don't have it already, and that's also free, so... Just a free, no frills, straightforward download, like the way things used to be, and the way things should still be. So this sample pack contains all the articulations, and all the various noises, so you can get a pretty realistic sounding guitar track in your songs, and it's also pretty lightweight, so it's not going to take up a huge space or leave your wallet filling any lighter. So when you've downloaded your file, this is a 7-zip archive. So just extract that wherever the hell you want. I, I'd advise you extract it into your mod plug tracker samples or instruments directory. You get these three folders here containing the instrument sounds and a PDF describing what all of them are and a few tips and tricks and things like that. Anyway, there's a lot to get through and I want to make this as quick as possible, so let's get started. Right, so here we are in Open Mod Plug Tracker. I hope you can hear me well enough. Got the fan on full because this room is far too hot if I turn the fan down onto... And it gets far too cold if I turn the fan up onto three. There's really no happy medium, but I hope it's not blowing into the microphone too much. So anyway, let's take a look at the actual sample banks we've got here. So, effects and noises, we've got main, and we've got other. Now, effects and noises is, like, all the in-between note noises and a few other things. Main is the actual note articulations, you know, legatos, mutes, staccatos, things like that. And we've got other, which we'll go into in just a bit. So, let's just take a look at some of the effects and noises. Beats, which is like a little fret squeak at the end of a chord. We've got chord stops, which is, you know, slapping your palm on the guitar's body to stop strings vibrating. I'm not going to demonstrate all the sounds because that's just going to take too long. We've got some slides. Finger squeak noises. Hammer on and pull off. And noises of notes being stopped. Notes being stopped by the finger. Notes being stopped by the fingernail. Notes being stopped by the pick. And another one I'll demonstrate from here is the stroke noise, which is the strumming sound, so you can add that to the beginning of a chord and it will make it sound more realistic. So you got a upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, and so on. So now let's have a look at what we've got in main. We've got buzz notes, round robin one, round robin two, and round robin three. Now here's something that I don't think even the paid sample bank says rapidly up and down pick notes and I've done these at the various different speeds so um, let's say your song is at speed 5 and you want to use these you would use the ones that are at speed 5 fret 
say, if your song's at, say, speed 7, you'd want to use the ones at speed 7. Let's have a look at a few others. We've got legatos, muted notes, and here's another one that I don't think is in any paid sample guitar sample bank. Pluck while string is in motion. And it's exactly what it says it is. So say you've got a note ringing out on a string and you pluck that string again to play a different note or to play the same note again. That's what this is for. Let's give that a listen. We've also got staccatos. Being stopped by the finger. Being stopped by the pick. Slightly longer. We've got sustain articulations. So buzz notes. Normal notes. Soft notes. I was going to record hard notes as well, but I was afraid of breaking the strings, so I didn't record those. And finally, tap notes. Now you might have noticed that on some of them you hear three of the same note. There's a very good reason for that, and that's going to be explained later on. But let's take a look at what's in other. So, mainly what we've got here is a whole octave from each string, so let's say we play a note from the D string. I don't usually use these, but if you say you want to play a chord and you don't, you know, you want to play it in a different... That's basically, you know, what you can use this for. And now for the question that you've all been asking, what's the deal with this whole three note thing? Well, the thing is, Mod Plug Tracker doesn't really have a way of doing round robins, so I've improvised here. And what round robins are, it's different instances of each note. So, if I play this... You might have been able to hear that, although it's the same instrument and the same note, each of those three plucks sounded a bit different to each other because of human error and things like that. Well, that's what round robins are. Each one of those plucks is a round robin. So we've got two short round robins and one long one. So one round robin here, another round robin here, and then we've got the third and longest round robin here. So the first one starts at the start of, start of the sample. The next one is at the 028 offset and the third one is at the 056 offset, and that is how you get to the individual round robins. You use offsets. So let me just um, show you how that works. So I've got a little thing here. As you can see, it's only made out of C notes. And what's going to happen is each time this note plays, it's going to play the corresponding sample from the beginning. And that will sound like this. That sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? So let's add some round robins. So you can see we've got some 028s for the second round robin. We've got some 03rd round robin. And to get to the first round robin, we just leave that blank or we put something else there. In this case, I've just put an arpeggio there just to demonstrate it. So let's hear what this sounds like now. different that sounds and how much more realistic that sounds that's the whole point of round robins so if you hear three notes played one after the other you'll know that that sample has round robins in them and they are done in that way that I just described and now you'll know how to use them now there is something I want to point out regarding the pluck while string is in motion and muted sample sets and that is, there is a little bit of a delay between the start of each round robin and where you hear the actual pluck of the note, which is, again, probably the worst explanation ever. Let's just have a look at a sample. So I've zoomed up on one of the pluck while string is in motion samples. I know it says lead plucks, but that's what I called it. And you can see at the beginning here, we got the sound of the pick stopping the string just before it plucks it again. And that goes on for about 20 milliseconds. So there's about 20 milliseconds of delay until you hear the actual pluck. And that 
applies to each round robin. So if we go to say the 028 round robin, again we got the sound of the string being stopped by the pick, just about to pluck it again. I wanted to include that to make it sound more realistic. The trouble is, obviously it's going to make it sound a little bit out. So what we got here is a, just a little thing I made up using the pluck while string is in motion sample set and also the staccato sample set. So we've got pluck while string in while string is in motion as instrument one and staccatos as instrument two. And also I'm using the uh, like bleeps and bloops from an old early eighties Casio keyboard. I think it was a SA one hundred or something like that. And using that as a metronome. So if we play that, it sounds like this. And I'm sure you could tell right away that these notes here sounded a little bit out of sync. And that is because I wanted to include that particular part of the sound, which delays the actual note. But there is a little workaround for this. Now this looks a bit complicated, but I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can. So, we've got the speed alternating between 01 and 04, which adds up to the original speed of 05 that we had in the previous pattern, with each tick of the metronome now four spaces apart instead of two, and the actual tune is now taking up twice as much space. So you might be wondering why you'd want to do this. Well, the reason is simple. Timing! So the even rows are going to play for like a fraction of a fraction of a second and the odd rows are going to play for longer than that and with it double spaced like this it's still going to play at the same basic tempo so we can think of the odd rows as just ordinary rows where we put you know your instruments and your drums and whatever on but the even row that's just above it is where we put the pluck while string is in motion and muted notes so doing it that way, it'll give the sample enough time to sort of like, you know, get going so the pluck is actually more or less in sync with the rest of the song. You can see here I've put the staccato notes and the metronome on the odd rows and I've put the pluck while string is in motion on the even rows. So let's give it a listen and hear how it sounds. Hear how much better that sounds? It's all in sync now. I mean, it's not too bad when it's not in sync, but if you're absolutely paranoid about it and really need it to be absolutely perfectly in sync, then, then this is a trick you could use. So let's have a look at some examples of what we can do with this. I thought I'd start with something simple, and try to replicate some songs that most people would know. I'm only going to do like one riff from each song, but you know, let's just hear how it sounds. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I'm sure everybody knows that song, I don't need to say the title of it. And I'm certainly not going to try to sing like Sting. You might have noticed here we've got a little squeak little fret slide squeak there so you might want to put those in in between each chord change just to make it sound a little bit more realistic and I'm also playing this through an amp effect to make it sound a little bit more um, better because all these samples are recorded clean so if we just disable this effect and play it without the effect this is how it sounds Let's put the effect back in. Of course it's not just soft ballast we can do, we can also do rock. And let's hear that clean. Now I want to show you a little trick that I've done here, which really makes the strums sound more realistic. So on channel 1, 2 and 3 we have the notes for the power chords. Right, but 
And if we take a look at the instrument settings, so you can see here I've put the ramping on full. So that's going to soften the attack so the volume of each note quickly fades in and it's going to make it sound more like a strum. Of course it's not going to sound exactly like a strum but it's much closer than if we don't have any ramping at all. Right, so I put the ramping back onto full and just to complete the effect to make it sound more like a strum I've put a stroke noise at the start of each chord. That's all that channel is doing, that's just making those noises there. But if we add it all together... Here's another one you might know using mostly staccato notes and stroke noises. It might be a little bit wrong, but here it is. and not play too much of that or I'll probably get copyright claims all over my video. And this is my kind of music, made with the pluck while string is in motion samples and buzzed notes. <laughs> Now you might have noticed that the pluck while string is in motion is on the even rows and the buzzed notes are on the odd rows. Just thought I'd point that out. Now one thing I like to do is remake old game music. So if we take, say, take this game here which has this music. Let's have a listen to what I've turned that into. And I've used quite a few of the tricks that I've explained earlier, such as on the chords here adding the stroke noise. So if we listen to that, you know, there's the stroke noise right there, and when we bring the other two back in, but I wonder what that would sound like if we added drums and a bass line. Needs a little bit of work, need a little bit of EQ. I mean, these drums are really badly recorded. And what did I use for the bass line? Maybe a Fender Precision Bass, maybe? Well, not exactly. Let's take a look at what instrument 8 actually is. As you notice, it's this staccato. And if we go to one of the other instruments that says staccato, you'll notice that each of those is using the exact same set of samples. The only difference is here that I've put a pitch envelope in which makes it play one octave lower than it should, and that can sound like a pretty decent bass. Because one neat thing about my plug tracker is if I press, if I hold down shift and press new, it creates a new instrument with the exact same set of samples and I can do whatever I want with it without it interfering with anything else that's using those samples. Which is kind of a pretty neat thing there. Right, I'm sure this is getting a bit long so I'm going to do one more thing before we wrap up the video. 
So let's take a little listen to this, and I will try to break it down and explain exactly what it is I did to make it. Right, so let's see what we've got here. Well, I'll start with the most simplest thing, the bass line. And like with the previous song, it is just one of the staccato sample sets just played an octave lower than it normally would. Got in the lead here, let's just listen to that. And now I've removed all the effects so we can hear it clean. Let's see what samples we got here. Well, we're starting with instrument 7, which is sustained notes buzzed, which are only single shot samples of each note, so there's no round robins on those. Then here we've got an 08, which is note stop nail, which does have round robins, but I've only, in this case, only used the first one. And a bit later on, we have a note, and then we've got instrument 9, which is pluck while string is in motion. So we got our initial pick there, and then all the other picks, or plucks, or whatever you want to call them. So we've got the first pluck there, played with instrument 7, and then all the plucks after that, played with instrument 9, and that gives it a bit more of a realistic sound if we just play that and then change these all to instrument 7 and now let's hear what that was and now let's hear what that sound like if that was all on instrument 7 which is you know legato notes buzzed doesn't sound quite as good we'll have to remove that offset there it's going to sound a little bit doesn't sound as realistic anymore and we've even got some staccatos in here for the really short notes. And finally, let's try to improve the guitar on something. Now, this song isn't one of mine, it's not one I did, but this is how it sounds. So let's see if we can make that um, let's see if we can make that guitar sound a little better. All right. So anyway, I've isolated the guitar a bit. Let's just have a listen to that. Now these are nothing to do with my samples, but we're going to change all that. So let's do that right now. Right here we go. I've changed the samples. I've had to um, transpose it down a little bit because it played far too high when I tried it with my samples, but let's hear how it sounds now. but I think we can add round robins to this. So here we go, we've got all three round robins of the buzz notes in. You might be asking why I use the buzz notes so much. To me they just sound a bit more real than pure notes do, so that's why I prefer using them. what else I think we'll do just a little something else to this okay so I've now added a little bit of pick noise 
just before each note. So, it now sounds like this. But let's put an amp on that and hear how the final thing's going to sound. And here's how it sounds. Anyway, that just about brings us to the end of this video, so I hope that's shed some light on how to use the samples and, well, happy downloading!